Hello, I'm Sarah Bellinger with the American Journal of Managed Care. Welcome to This Week in Managed Care from the Managed Markets News Network. This week, AJMC published a series of reports on a 10-year experiment in payment reform funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Called Aligning Forces for Quality, or AF4Q, the effort brought stakeholders within distinct regional markets together to collaborate on care delivery and engage consumers in their care. The supplement features results of an independent evaluation led by Dr. Dennis Scanlon of Penn State University, who is the associate editor of AJMC. Researchers found that getting stakeholders in healthcare to collaborate over an extended period is not easy, and engaging consumers is even more challenging. The supplement's editor, Dr. Donald Berwick, told AJMC in an exclusive interview that while the Affordable Care Act is landmark legislation, it's still very hard for ordinary citizens to understand their role in the healthcare system. We really still need a way to help uh, busy lay people who, who, who have a stake in their communities but are, have many, many things in their minds to be able to grasp what it means to align for health, what their responsibility is, how to, how to act cooperatively. That's unsolved. And indeed, one of the lessons learned in AF4Q is how difficult that is. The attention of the public is a very limited resource. And uh, I'd say the challenge in an election year in any year is, to f is now to bridge between the technical understandings of how we really can achieve better health and the day-to-day -day mentality of a very busy public. That, that's, that's unsolved. We're not there yet. Results from the early years of the Affordable Care Act continue to appear in AJMC, including a new commentary on the challenges of applying new payment models to the emergency room environment. By their nature, emergency departments cannot always control which patients they treat, and authors from the Brookings Institution and Duke University examined how careful transitions from pure fee-for-service to newer models are needed to ensure financial stability of emergency departments given their fixed costs. For the full article, visit AJMC.com. Employee wellness programs have been touted as a way to lower health insurance costs. However, a new survey finds that while employees like having these programs, they aren't always useful. Results from WellTalk and the National Business Group on Health found that 81% of those surveyed thought that programs had a positive impact, and 60% thought including family members would boost participation. 37% of those who took part in the programs didn't find them relevant, and 20%, a full one-fifth of the employees surveyed, did not know that these programs were available. Brian Marcote, CEO and President of the National Business Group on Health, had this advice. Personalization is the key. There are emerging engagement platforms and point solutions that show great promise in driving and sustaining engagement by leveraging data, predictive analytics, and technology to reach people with personalized, timely, relevant, and actionable information. Sanofi revealed a setback this week when it announced that the approval for its insulin combination therapy will be delayed until November. The FDA required Sanofi to submit more information on the pen delivery system for its therapy, which combines basal insulin and lixacenatide for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Sanofi had redeemed a $245 million priority review voucher to move its approval time ahead of Nova Nordisk Zoltafi, which combines its Traceba insulin with liraglutide. A decision on Zoltafi is expected in September. Both insulin and GLP-1 combination treatments received plenty of attention at the June meeting of the American Diabetes Association. There are more cancer therapies than ever, but what happens if the cost puts them out of reach? A special issue of Evidence-Based Oncology explores the clinical, ethical, and practical questions surrounding the cost of cancer care, including the burden on family members and young adults with the disease. As Editor-in-Chief Dr. Joseph Alvarnas writes, the issue of cost sharing in oncology care sits squarely on the intersection of our aspirations to deliver precision medicine solutions while attempting to foster an economically sustainable cancer care system. For the full issue of Evidence-Based Oncology, visit AJMC.com. To learn more about the effect of cost on cancer care, join us for the fifth annual meeting of Patient-Centered Oncology Care, which will convene in Baltimore on November 17th and 18th. For information and to register, visit AJMC.com. For all of us at the Managed Markets News Network, I'm Sarah Bellinger. Thank you for joining us.